one night made to be enjoyed and have a good time, became a moment that would change my life forever. Perhaps with ups and downs, with some dark moments and others full of adrenaline, the truth is that this night resulted in a flood of feelings and actions that led me to conceive and live life differently. That night, I had both the worst and best experience of this life. It took me years to understand it, and I'm still on that journey of understanding it. Now, the memory of that night has another meaning for me. I could mention so many ways about which that night changed my future. From changes in my daily life, tears that continue to flow when I remember what took place so many years ago. I remember places and sites that I can no longer visit, unless I do a great job of preparing for it. Although sometimes I don't have enough energy to bypass that, even with the negative and positive decrees carried out after said event, which, for better and for worse, have been fulfilled. I was in Chromanon. I was there, a smile on my face to celebrate an evening with music that represented me. I was there, in front of all, on the right side of the stage. After the few initial chords, everything changed. A pyrotechnic flare set off inside the nightclub started a fire. I still internalized the pain from that night. I heard the screams, the people falling one on top of one another, the hands that grabbed my feet to try to save themselves and that I could not keep on. I heard the prayers of many of the people who were there and who no longer saw life on this plane. Screams, tears, desperation, footsteps stepping over bodies. I was there until I was no more. After such suffering and despair, everything was very mixed up. Memories and flashes were coming up, one after the other, but without me having the time to sort them well. After that, a kind of passage led me to a place where peace reigned. After taking that passage was tunnel, everything became calm and peaceful. The love, tranquility, and luminosity that I experienced then were indescribable. Everything was peaceful. Everything was fine, as I remember. And I relive that feeling every time I want to calm down and get down from the levels to which physical life leads us during many moments. There, and without being able to explain the time lived in that other place, I found myself observing the earth from the sky. Down there, I saw my own burial. Without understanding the space and time clock, as soon as I arrived at that beautiful and calm place, I saw my funeral. As if time moved to other levels we are not used to on this physical plane. For me, it was where seconds would have been days in this physical life, which is how long it usually takes to organize burials. Deprived of a scientific answer, there I was, watching from heaven how they covered my coffin with earth. I saw how my loved ones suffered from my death, and above all, I saw the grief of my mother and my sister. Right there, overwhelmed by emotions and their suffering, I knew that I didn't want to cause them more pain in their physical life. Our family had been confronted with many unfortunate situations. We had experienced a lot of suffering, so that now I could not cause them more pain. From where I was, I couldn't tell them not to grieve, or that everything was fine. I had never felt as light and peaceful as I did. I wanted them to know that I had not suffered when I had died. Yes, perhaps what was traumatic was what came before, but the transition to this new state was natural. How was I going to tell them that? The deep pain motivated me to return, to come back to this physical plane. I was once again inside Chromanon. I woke up and without understanding anything, I got up and tried to get out. I was far from the last spot I remembered where bodies were packed together. People were struggling to get out, live and escape. Yet I got up with no one around me. I always had the feeling that I got up in the same spot where the tragedy started. I got up effortlessly rather than struggling to get out. I saw some drops falling from the ceiling. There was a door and a man next to it who was saying, this way, this way. And so, without understanding anything, I went through the door that led to the hotel located next to the Chromanon. I remember climbing on a chair and passing through the reception area. After a few steps, I came out to the street, and there I was, brought back to physical life. But it would never be the same despite the many years I covered up that experience. I left that place, 
with everything except my shoes. Barefoot and walking down the street, I began to understand the magnitude of what had happened, the tragedy in which I had found myself, and had not been in. Human cordons were beginning to form, desolate screams echoed in the night, sirens. What I lived through afterwards remains for another time, as painful as that same evening, the touring of morgues, hospitals, in search of friends. Here, I will focus on the deeper questions such as where I was when I left this dimension. What happened to me? Did I hallucinate? And many questions that I asked myself for a long time. Who would believe me? I was scared and embarrassed to share this experience, fearing they would not believe me. So much so that this experience traumatized me to the point where they had to medicate me. I do not come from a spiritual family. Rather, I come from a family that lived and continues to live day by day to fulfill the obligations of this life. Who could I turn to if I didn't know myself how to begin to describe what had happened? Who was I going to feel encouraged to talk to about it, or if I was still a rational person? What's more, I still remember how those thoughts, plus the casual way those around me treated similar experiences, made me bury ever deeper inside me my out-of-body experience. It was like that for many, many years. After my experience in the Chromanon and covering up my out-of-body experience, I filled my life with activities. Anyone who saw me from the outside would surely have thought that I was doing well. I was studying law, working in a multinational company, studying English, and was full of aspirations. But beware, appearances can be very deceiving. Beneath that super-efficient self, there was a damaged self that I didn't want to see. I covered it with many things. I practically had no time for anything. I studied law at the University of Buenos Aires. I had a great career in a multinational company, becoming foreign trade manager at the age of 23. I studied English on Saturdays, went to the gym, and if I had time, I found something to fill it with. I never had any rest time, and so many years passed. I don't regret much because I think it helped me confront a situation I still had no tools to deal with. It also gave me beautiful gratifications, and even more knowledge that I am capable. With that panorama, Deluded by the thought that I was fine, I still always told myself that Chromanon was going to impact me when I wanted to be a mother, that I would surely have problems then. Where did that thought come from? I was super young, without a partner, without any thought of becoming a mother. I was already launching negative affirmations that would end up being fulfilled. I believed in it so much that it ended up happening. Surely there are many more factors that led to this. But here, I just want to dwell on my thoughts. We experienced a lot on the way to the birth of our daughter, Luz. I no longer have any doubts that the universe gives signs. However, understanding them is a constant challenge that puts us under constant review. Even today, almost 20 years after my experience at the Chromanon, I continue in that search. Or rather, only now am I beginning to give it space and discover those messages. In this space that I am currently giving to my NDE, I am discovering my purpose. I am no longer afraid nor ashamed of what I experienced, although I can count on the fingers of one hand those in whom I confided my experience. Only now do I feel that it is time to give it a place, to allow my experience to come out. I don't want to hide it anymore, and I want to give new meaning to life, death, funerals, life after life. This story was shared by Barbara A. and happened in 2004.